<laughs> Alright, yep, it's live. Hello everybody. Aloha e malama pono. So again, we're doing uh, the live again with Sifu Kai. He's here at, right here at the dojo. Uh, we're here at his dojo here in Milani, and now we're going to ch train a little bit with some slip punches, some trapping, and a little more JKD movement. So if you guys are just coming in now, hello. Wave to you, some of you all there. And uh, yeah, we're gonna get started. So usually in the beginning now, if the Instagram ones, we just kind of open up for short questions, like for two to five minutes as people come in. So as you wait for more people to come in, you can just comment uh, anything that you had questions about or want to see. Hello from Netherlands. So we got someone from Netherlands. Oh, right now. Yeah. Cool. Hello from Turkey. Hello. Beautiful place, Turkey. I've been there. All right, and two shakas. <laughs> yep. Um, but since uh, most of you who haven't seen the YouTube live version, Persakai was on that for with me for about an hour. Uh, so here we might do about 30 minutes, maybe a little longer. I'm not sure. We'll just play it by ear. But he's going to show some technique as well as maybe we'll mix in some trapping as well as slipping and punching. Things to do, you can do simultaneous attack and defense, as well as stuff you can do solo training, because I know most of you may not have a partner. And for those of you on Instagram that don't know, I'm Nate's primary teacher. So how he met some of my teachers, like Sifu Richard Bastillo, uh, Grandmaster Jihan Jay, and so forth, was through me. I started training him when he was a high school kid. So like me, he grew up in a, mar a traditional martial arts program as a child. And in his case and in mine, it was a mixed system. And then he went through a phase where he was searching on his own, trying to discern his future path. And he decided that he became especially interested in Bruce Lee's art of Jeet Kune Do. And then fortunately, one of our mutual friends who he knew from church was one of my students and brought him to my class. and. The rest is history. <laughs> yes, thank you, exactly. So, you ones who haven't watched YouTube, that's exactly what we talked about last time as well. My history, my background, where Purser Kai comes into play here, and how he introduced me to a lot of the teachers that I know today. And yeah, he's my primary coach here in Hawaii, and we've been training together for a number of years now. All right, so I guess we can get started. Uh, any you questions? Have, any other any... questions? Uh, no, I didn't see any questions so far. I, I noticed. Yeah, and not in English at least. There was a few in um, <laughs> another language just now. Now, one thing I do want to mention, only because he pointed out we had some people greeting us from the Netherlands and from Turkey, is the international nature of the inspiration of Bruce Lee and Jikundo. There was something special about him that spoke to people of all nations, regardless of ethnicity, culture, religion, politics, all of these sort of things. Very grateful that that is true because there is a, a, a real peacefulness, a real peacefulness that comes from confronting the darkness within ourselves through martial arts. Mm -hmm. That if we can eliminate anger, fear, anything that would make us act in a way that would be negative, if we can confront that within ourselves, then in our lives, we can become people that make other people's lives better. And that is something that I feel that Bruce Lee was a great inspiration for around the world. And in a sense, it unites us that regardless of what background we might have or where we might come from, we can come together in a positive spirit through Jeet Kune Do. Very good, whatever I said. And yes, exactly. He had an interview, and maybe you've, some of you have seen, about him being a Chinese martial artist. And he's like, well, I don't think about it as a Chinese martial artist. I think of, or me as a Chinese martial artist. I think of myself as a human being expressing himself. Exactly. Like, we're all the same. We all just come from different places. Um, under the sky, under the yeah. heavens, we are one family. Exactly. And that's actually what's on the shirt here, if you <laughs> want to turn around for a second. And so under the sky, under the heavens, there is but one family. Right, so that's what we believe as well, and that's what Bruce Lee left as a legacy, and how he, he actually inspired with by other um, philosophers as well, not just himself, of course. It's just some reiteration, but in a way he put it into different words. So yeah, exactly good. 
So now um, if everyone's ready, we can, if you have any more questions, we can continue on. Yeah, facts about 100% Bruce Lee was something else. Yeah, so he, someone agrees with you. Oh, here's, an, uh, here's a question. So if I want to learn Jackie Lee, how do I learn at least from you? Any tapes, classes, websites, YouTube? Yeah, there is a YouTube for both of us actually. So Ninja Nate, the same name that you see here on Instagram. And Alohe Kai, right? Is that right? Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> I can put the spelling in as a comment, but O L O H E K A I. Aloha Kai. But also, in addition to that, we are actually working on building a site where you can go step by step and learn with us in a progression. So, if that's something you would definitely be interested in, please do give us your information, uh, send a DM and we can get that to you because that's something that we are working on that we're trying to get launched this summer. So uh, in a step-by-step -step way. I also do have a DVD out there that was produced for the European market a few years ago in uh, Portugal where we both participated in the World Championships and I did do a specific DVD for JKD that was put out in Europe. But if you're interested in training with us and, and formally becoming ranked in the future, that's something that we are setting up this summer. Yep, all right. One more question maybe, I think I saw a couple of things. Uh, where can I get those shirts? Unfortunately, these are only for people in Hawaii as students and uh, we have a source here that can do that. Originally it was sold by the UFC gym years ago when I first started in 2012, but they're impossible to get now if you want to know, so. You have to come see us in person. <laughs> that said, as we develop the site and so forth, we might have some special edition shirts for you. Yeah, there's someone that's excited for the step-by-step -step he just said. Hello from Indonesia. Hello. All right, Indonesia. And I think that's it. So, yep, all right. Okay, so let's just start with some warm-ups first, maybe, so like, maybe some neck side to side, turning the head. Now one thing I want to point out when you're warming up your neck in particular is have soft knees and soft hips. What I mean by that, and Nate will keep rotating his neck, mm -hmm. is that if your knees and hips are locked, then every time you move your head, your whole body is going to, iso is going to isolate and it's going to start to oscillate in a high center of gravity. Now change direction. But if your knees and hips are soft, they'll absorb that oscillation. Plus, it'll make it where your body's constantly more like bamboo in the wind, and it's springier, it's able to respond. So when you're doing your warm up, you're also putting synovial fluid to warm up your joints. Mm -hmm. And you want to do this in such a way that it allows your whole body to have that connection. So now that we've done the neck, let's rotate to the shoulders. So I'm gonna... Elevate and relax. And again, soft knees, soft hips. And we're gonna change direction. Now it's gonna be like I'm a butterfly swimmer. And then it's going to kind of look like a dance move. I'm going forward on one side, then forward on the other side. And then reverse that. Keep going, I'm going to see a comment that might have been up. Yep. Now I've gone down to the hips. So some of you said that you did want that step by step, so just, uh, we don't need to keep these live uh, comments because I can't find them later. So again, remember to DM so we can have your information and your and account so that uh, we can send you to you later on. And if you want to find me on Instagram, it's pretty easy. Coach underscore Kai, K-A-I underscore Lee, spelled L-I like Jet Lee. So Coach underscore Kai underscore Lee. If you want to find my Instagram, you'll see some related content. A lot of what I put out is positive mindset, positive, healthy perspective to help people through this crisis that we're all in. I focus more on that 
internal aspect of the spiritual, emotional, and mental state, and not just the physical training. Now, one thing that Sifu Nate brought up for you folks today was the concept of trapping. Since I just brought up those other elements, don't be trapped in your mind. And that's something that Bruce Lee pointed out over and over again. So you want to have a state that makes it difficult for you to be trapped. You want to be difficult to be triggered. You don't want to be someone that is easily angered or easily upset. You want to allow your mind to be very flexible and resilient. So that's also part of trapping, is to see every challenge as an opportunity instead of a big problem. So that's a perspective thing that is pretty much never brought up. But when it comes to the concept of trapping, that's a thing. I'll give you a, a physical example of what I'm talking about. If Sifune and I are in the classic bridge position from Enter the Dragon. I can see his arm as in my way if I want to feel trapped. But if instead I want to feel like he's inviting me to go in, or he's inviting me to go out, then I have no impediment, I have no obstacle to my flow. I can also see this as an opportunity to completely disengage. So he puts up a fence and I'm over here and now there's no fence. He puts up a fence and now I'm over here and now there's no fence. I don't have to attack. So a lot of it is perspective. In your own psyche, in your own emotional, spiritual, and mental state, how you walk around the world determines whether or not you get upset easily. So a good example is driving because all over the world people are in traffic. Yeah. Now, do the other cars around you care that you're stuck in your car with no air conditioning? <laughs> they don't even know you are. So being upset at that is not helpful to your situation. So instead, you can take it as an opportunity to possibly contemplate some of these lessons. So as a prefix to what Nate's about to share with you physically, just take that in as a, as a meditation for today. Don't let yourself trap yourself. Let's start with that. Yeah, exactly. So what we will start with is that exact reference point that Sifu Kai was mentioning. We're going to start with that bridge hand here. And if, of course, you don't have a partner, you can always put your hand out in the air, imagining the contact. Of course, you're not, it's still better to get the f physical feeling of this because you're going to want to have that little bit of pressure because right now we're not completely dead in our arm, just putting our arm out. We're actually both pressing slightly forward a bit because it's almost like the dam like he was talking about. There's a wall here, there's an obstruction, and I'm, he's not letting me pass, I'm not letting him pass. Now, there is those flowing around techniques that he was mentioning, but right now we're going to actually take down the wall with the rear hand. So instead of using this and keeping it in the blue style, I'm just gonna push that arm down. And once it goes down, I wanna flow through it. So there's no time between this and I'm gonna retract and hit. No, I'm just gonna go straight through the line. So instead of, yeah, so we're just, we're just gonna trap it and you're gonna hit right away. So stop and hit. So if you're in the air, you can be doing this just like that. And one way you can do this, by the way, is put a heavy towel over an open door. Open a door, put a heavy towel on it so that there's some softness, and then push against the door, and then all you're doing with the pox out is you just pop the door and your hand will go right through it. Because the door's on a hinge, it'll move for you. And you can do that on both sides. You just have to have the door in an open neutral position. And I would probably put a towel on it just so you don't scrape yourself or anything. But it gives you that feeling if you don't have another human being to practice with. So we'll show you this from the other end here. Mm -hmm. I'll do this very slowly. So what this energy, by the way, you'll notice I'm quite a bit bigger. But if you're coming from your core, where your feet are rooted and your core is engaged, then you can't tell from the video, but the feeling to he and I is fairly equal. I'm putting the same amount of pressure he's putting on me. Plus, we're having to stay within the narrow confines of his iPhone. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
but I'm putting the same amount of pressure and if I try to use big guy strategy, it'll be difficult for me to feel him. If I'm trying to go, ah, I won't be able to feel him. So instead, we find that equal point, and then all I'm doing with the poxal, showing slow motion, is I'm just at the elbow energy point. I'm just pushing his, levering his forearm a little bit out of the way so that my fist can extend. He'll do the same thing to me that slowly. I'm gonna push against the elbow line. It takes away the obstruction, and I'm gonna just flow right through, just like that, nice and slow. So what you wanna see is mainly because of distance, there's a split second of timing where the poxal precedes the punch. But it's just a split second. I'll give you an example. True simultaneous would be that, right? But in order to do that, I'm massively telegraphing my hit. That's where mm -hmm. there I'm not. It's but up, but up. So watch Sifu Nate do it. Now do simultaneous. What I was saying was wrong. See, it's hard for him to do it wrong mm -hmm. because he's trained for over a decade doing it the correct way mm -hmm. that to do it with the wrong timing is difficult. Yeah. Okay. But if you are following us, then try this timing. This is the classical initial bridge that almost everyone in the Junfan Kung Fu and Jeet Kune Do community starts out with. And it was something that Bruce Lee commonly used to demonstrate to other martial artists the value of what he is sharing with them. Another reason why we can't really do this simultaneously is again, I'm not taking away the obstruction first. I need to get that out of the way before I can actually push through. Otherwise it becomes a two-handed press. Because if I did actual truly simultaneously, it's kind of like this. And he feels that energy now. And that's what happened last time. I couldn't actually finish the attack because he just feels this extra pressure here instead of the dropping down takedown and then I, I go through the open line. I need to respond to some movement uh, instead of just pressing forward with both hands. Yeah. Plus if we're going to use the terminology, <clears throat> if he's using, going to use both hands, it's fairly easy for me just to convert from the initial bridge to a lawn style position mm -hmm to then really his attack becomes an invitation for my attack. So you kind of lose that stickiness and you lose that deception. And deception is an interesting word uh -huh. because Sifu Aldo Costco is one of my Kaji Kemo teachers. He was very fond of saying that all warfare is deception. And like Bruce Lee, sure. they were big readers of Lao Tzu and all of the old sages where these strategies they're very, very true to the point that they've been written millennial, millennial upon millennial ago by great strategists and people that wrote about these kinds of ideas. So in this concept, there has to be a little bit of a surprise. And, and so to cultivate that, if you're new to this, if I'm thinking about the end of the move, his hand, like a cat whisker, you know? So think of us as uh, he's a leopard and I'm a tiger, if you're gonna think Kung Fu language, only because of size or whatever. The cat whiskers are gonna tell the story. So if I start to move this hand first, he knows I'm coming, and then in, in comes that, that counterattack, right? If I push forward, right, in comes that counterattack. So if my goal is to initiate this attack by surprise, I want to use core to establish this, not your shoulder or your wrist or your elbow. If he tries to use the shoulder against my 230 something pounds, his shoulder is going to die really soon. Mm -hmm. There's no way he's going to be able to maintain his structure. But if he uses core, 
we're gonna look like almost like we're in a, a movie scene. If he uses core, I can move around him 360 degrees and he can maintain this contact. So I'm keeping pressure and moving and he's moving and he can maintain this pressure the whole way around as long as it's coming from core to extremity. All right, now core to extremity, again, very old physiological principle and something uh, that he and I both studied in, in college, but also very popular through CrossFit, that your exercise generation should be from core to extremity, which makes it not only stronger, but also safer. Right, so yeah, so after we've gotten this basic movement down, where we're chopping and hitting down midline, we're gonna talk about the other flowing sides now. So a couple of them would be the back fist or the hammer fist this way, or the swinging around to a hook. So those are flowing on the outer edges now. So if we can't crash through the middle, then we'll go around or we'll go through this way. So let's try the back fist one first because it's the most similar. Now this one especially, I'm just coming in and hitting through this way. Instead of hitting down the midline, I'm going across to his side of his head. Like this. One thing you want to note is where he's applying the pock is slightly different. If, so that you can see from this side of the view, if I'm edging this forward and in, the direct line is easier. If I want to do the back fist or hammer fist, I want to collapse his line a little bit. So I'm going to go just a little bit in mm -hmm. to feed this way, right? Now I can exaggerate this, which if we were acting in a movie, I'd want to massively exaggerate, right? Or I can make it more congruent with a single motion, right? Or I can make it circular, okay? More like a mace, right? Or a medieval weapon where there's that big thing with the spikes on a chain. And... I'll let Nate demonstrate this. He's very good at emulating Bruce Lee's expression in this type of technique. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Give me a bow. Yeah. Bow. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> okay. So there's that feeling. Now we'll alternate. So he comes in, I come in. That way, if you're copying us at home, you can do this as well. Okay, probably too fast for you to see, so let me point out something. Because yeah. there's, a, there's a little special timing thing that we're doing. So he comes in with his head. Now watch what I do first. I re-bridge, then I trap and I hit. And he's doing it too. Mm -hmm. He re-bridges Bridge. and then he traps and he hits. If you're not doing that, you're going to end up slamming each other in the face. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it occurred to me in the midst of this that if you're trying to emulate us on the video, that you, that you might not be doing that. So if I'm facing you here and we're in bridge position, right? We're going to execute that pock. The forearm changes levels, leads with the elbow, and attacks with the hammer or the back fist. Now, old school, most people would probably do the back fist. My teacher, Sifu Richard Bastillo, was a big fan of the hammer. He had a lot of street experience. He was known as the Iron Dragon of Jeet Kune Do. And it is true that you're less vulnerable to injury hitting someone with the hammer mm -hmm. than you are with the back of the hand because you have to precisely hit with the knuckles. Otherwise, the metacarpals here are very easy to break. And that's why. Nothing wrong, though, in terms of the the technique in terms of the tradition and the art and knowing how to do this both ways. But Sifu Richard's influence is the main reason why you'll see Nate and I primarily using the back fist version. Okay, but that was just a little detail that mm -hmm. you yeah. might not have noticed. That after the hit, he's gonna re-bridge with the lead arm and then he'll counter trap. Re-bridge, Hit. All right. Go ahead and go to the okay. the third one. All right. So I don't know, one more thing with this one actually. So oh, we yeah. noticed we did. Uh, this timing is slightly different as well. The staggering instead of going straight through, like that, is actually I kind of 
replace the hand and pull it back and then I hit. So that way people who are expecting that straight blast are not going to hit it exactly in that timing anymore. So it's a good way to set it up is that maybe you did a straight hit first. They're going to try to pop like you did a little bit early and then I can go around it. So and right. it's trajectory wise, it's also trickier because you're hitting to the side instead of down the midline. So uh, one other thing about the elbow through here too, this one is also trapping in a sense. It's trapping the hand double. So I'm keeping this already on top, especially when you're doing it opposite, you have that elbow on his elbow. So that's another thing to note is keeping this hand over your other hand or your trapping hand. Then you have two hands supporting instead of just holding it with one hand going over the top. No, and, and that is part of the deal with this, right? Is that in a certain sense, you're doing a little bit of an attack by draw, if you're familiar with the five ways of attack. Mm -hmm. Because if on the previous line, right, I came in with this. Mm -hmm. So he's expecting this. He's expecting this. He's expecting this. Then that receiving hand is going to be used to coming straight forward. Mm -hmm. So when I feed the elbow, yeah. the pot ends up touching my elbow and he's wide open for the hammer, right. right? That's kind of what he was talking about. I just want to make sure you got it because it's the alternate view. Yes, exactly. And now, yeah, we will move on to the third one. So the other entrance is going and becoming like a swing door. And instead of just going against and pushing it down or redirecting it to the side, we're just going to let the energy go and we're going to swing and hit. So in this case, I feel there's a lot of pressure here, especially pushing me outwards. So I'm just going to catch it with my other hand, lead hand and come around to the side. So I'm just fading with his energy. So I fade and I, I let, allow him to go through, but I still catch it with this rear hand so that I don't get hit. So the energy is already coming at me. I yield to the energy, but I come in with the other hand. Again, so slowly I let it go. I roll it down. I'm catching it. Then this swings over and it's a hook or a palm the head. So you can see it from the alternate view. I feel the outward pressure going this way. So I just let it go. Like watch, he's just going to bounce toward you guys if I just let it go. Okay. So I let it go. But when I let it go, I'm passing it to the other hand. You see that? So without hitting them, I just let it go and I catch. And see, my other hand is now in like a lazy bong style, if you're familiar with the terminology. He's pushing, I let it go, and now I'm hanging here. So now your arm is going to be like a nunchaku, meaning it's a flail on a chain. I let it go, and now you can hit, right? Boom. Okay, now we'll go back and forth with this. So that's the feeling is you're emulating that type of flexible weapon, all right? So he does it to me, we rebridge, I do it to him. You'll see, sometimes I'm varying the timing. I'm doing that on purpose because mm -hmm. it's easy to drone, to get into a habit where with a training partner, especially a training partner that you work with a lot, that it turns into choreography and it gets less alive. Mm -hmm. So on purpose to help him improve, sometimes... I'll give him more energy to give him a reason to do it versus just we're doing it, we're doing it, we're doing it, we're doing it. Sometimes I'll give him less to maybe say, okay, not yet mm -hmm. to, to, to execute the technique. And as you practice this with your partner, that's something that you can play with because you always want to revisit the foundation. True mastery is owning your basics and in every martial art on the planet that I've studied, that is always the case, right? So a high-level person in judo is going to want to see your takuinage, your favorite throw. 
And he'll be able to tell based on that one throw what the rest of your judo is like. A uh, really good instructor in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is going to want to see your progression from a bad position into a good one into a submission. And he can tell from those transitions how thorough your training is. Same is true in this, in, in Jun Fan, in Jeet Kune Do, in its root art of Wing Chun, in fencing and in boxing. You can tell a lot just by how someone throws a jab, whether or not the rest of their training is solid. Right, exactly. And yeah, that's what I feel when I were doing this drill, is that we're both working on something, because after he did the mistiming, I felt it. So then I have to keep my concentration alive and not droning, as he's saying, by trying to receive and understand and feel when he's actually going to move. And on the flip side, you can train your broken rhythm attacks. So if you're doing the feeding and you're starting the attack, then you can actually change it, the rhythm on them. So it's more tricky for the other person, but also teaches you how to do off timing and off broken rhythm. And you just go back and forth doing that. One pr practice broken rhythm, one tries to practice reaction time and trying to feel when it's going to happen. And you guys may not realize it, but you're actually contributing to the training as well. Because we're not only having to feed off of each other's energy and technique, but we're both <laughs> making sure that you're involved. So imagine you're fighting a guy over here, <laughs> but I'm looking at you, right? Yeah. And so then we're having to make those adjustments to have our orientation be in the direction of each other, but making sure that we're still within the camera frame and that what you're seeing is something that you can decipher what we're doing. Because sometimes on our own, we'll automatically amp and it'll go faster and faster and faster. And then to you folks, it just looks like a blur, right? Uh -huh. um, but in that sense too, I also want to encourage you because I did have some feedback from a previous video we did uh, that it really doesn't matter where you're at. You can always be better tomorrow than yesterday utilizing this material. So uh, in one of the videos we did with Kendall. Yeah. So Kendall's also a pretty big guy. And so what you maybe didn't think of was, hey, it's great if you can have the physiology of Bruce Lee and be roughly around the same size and weight as he was. Because then you know that in terms of physiology, you should be able to perform a lot of the things that he did. But you might not realize that that's not limited to that. That you could be a really big guy and be able to do all of this. It's, you know, what, how you come into the world, what your physiology is, should never be a limiting factor. Because all of us have to work from where we're from. If you go to my channel, you'll see I do a lot of work with people with disabilities. We're both certified to teach the blind. I also teach people that are, um, have other deficiencies, Down syndrome, uh, cerebral palsy, all kinds of things. Bruce Lee, as you know, was legally blind. He had one leg shorter than the other. <clears throat> Anything like that is an invitation from the universe for you to do the best you can with it. Never give up based on any perceived limitation. Because as you can see, this is just training. If you really get what we're doing, there's no reason why if you're a big person, you can't be just as fast. Here's something that you maybe never even thought of. How fast could you blink your eye when you were six years old? How fast can you blink your eye when you're 86 years old? Answer, the same. So even though the speed that two people might run, a 100 meter dash is gonna be different, your life and death speed when it really matters, that first instant, it doesn't have anything to do with size, strength, physiology, age. So train to make yourself maximize your potential. I'm not sure what else you want to add, we might be out of time. But that's, yeah, that's it for today. We can do a quick review on it again, just all three of those. Next time we might look at the lower lines because there, there is also a low hit to this as well. But we decided to take the three top ones first, the center, the left, and the right. So just as a short review, we'll do all three. We'll go back and forth. So like we'll do straight line, then he does straight line. Then I do practice, 
he does breakfast. Then I go loop around and he loops up. Good. Straight. 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 Back. 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 Loop. And loop. Hook. Yeah. Okay? Yep. Yeah. Good. <clears throat> so we're facing you, and if you're practicing solo, right? Displace and forward is the first one. Displace and back fist or hammer is the second one. And then let them run your hand and hook around, right? And there's lots of ways to do the actual impact, right? I can hook around with the knuckles. I can hook around with the ridge hand. I can hook around with the palm, which that, because it's kind of like a, hey, how you doing, boy? Was he for Richard's favorite way <laughs> to make sure you're paying attention to class, right? Yeah. And you're like, Bam. hey. Yeah. <laughs> and, if, and it looks really cool if you have long hair like, like Nate does, <laughs> as opposed to you can tell I'm a proud graduate of Ernie and Bert's House of Hair Design. It's on Sesame Street. It's what you get when you cut your own hair. <laughs> okay? Yeah. So stay safe out there, everyone. Please be kind to each other. And remember, as Bruce Lee said, that under one heaven, under the sky, we're all one family. Exactly. Thank you, guys. I'm going to look at the comments real quick to see if we have any last-minute questions, and then we'll be finished. Let's see. Because um, I did see a bunch of stuff. Any specific stretches for high front, back, and side kicks? Uh, ones that just react like water. That's good, yeah. Uh, so someone from Peru, hello. And uh, unworded, are you a martial artist as well? Okay. It's very important to have different partners, like different pressure on weight and heights, like practicing with more taller persons. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And the opposite. As a big person, it's quite helpful for me to practice with people who are really small. When I first got into Filipino martial arts, and now you're dealing with knives, my being a big guy did not help me. So I had to learn how to work really well with those low lines. If someone who's only you know five feet tall comes at you with a knife, that's a real easy line to miss if you're a big guy. So in real life, it's almost never equal. You're not normally gonna face someone that's the same exact height and weight you are as if you were in the UFC or boxing or some other formal competition. In real life, it's more likely than not, not going to be the same. So it is very important to train with all varieties if you can. All right. Yeah, so actually the only other question I saw where people were asking what is Bruce Lee's training like and what kind of stuff they need to work on if they're going to do a sport fight competition flexibility, speed, those two questions, anything you want to add to like flexibility or speed training? <clears throat> Mainly that both aren't an instant thing. Yeah. So the thing with speed, and there's a saying that's used by a lot of professionals, slow is smooth, smooth is fast. And part of the idea there, and as you know, Bruce Lee also did uh, ballroom dancing, particularly cha-cha. Everything has to be exactly right to eliminate any mistakes. And to do that, you initially have to do things very slowly and then very smoothly, meaning no mistakes. Then when you start adding power and speed to that, you can get true speed. If you already have a flaw in how you're doing it, that flaw only gets magnified when you do it fast. So having it correctly is really your key in the long run toward having it be fast or to having the aspect of speed. <clears throat> so really cultivate that. Whatever you're doing, you're gonna have to do it consistently over a long period of time. Uh, there, really, there really is no shortcut to that. You can use things like videos and all this, and if you have all this free time because of the lock time, lockdown, you can certainly train more than once a day. But there's no shortcut in terms of your physiology being able to take on true ability. So you might be able to do a year's worth of work in three months, absolutely. But you're not going to be fast in a day. Same thing with flexibility. True flexibility is functional flexibility. What do I mean by that? Well, if I just have 
may pull my arm back, right? I eventually can have a more flexible shoulder, but it won't be stronger if that's all that was happening. Whereas if it's active instead of passive, and what do I mean by that? Okay, if his arm is just dead weight and I'm articulating it through space, that's passive. He's not doing anything. I'm articulating his arm, right? And if we were doing kicking, this could be his leg. Right. Now, if instead Nate is going to give me almost like he's doing a um, cable fly, which Bruce did like to do, right? So he's pulling in with his chest against my grip. And then he relaxes and I make a little bit more and he does it again. And then I do a little bit more and then he does it again. And I do it a little bit more and he does it again. Okay. So that's PNF, it's isometric stretching. But the concept is, if we do that with kicks, and maybe we could even do a video on this for you in the future, mm -hmm. the concept is you want to have functional range of motion. That, that's actually more important than flexibility. So just flexibility, someone might be able to do the splits, but if they don't have the strength behind it, they won't be able to kick over their head. Not with any power. It would just be something that would irritate or piss someone off. So. Functional range of motion means being strong through the entire articulation that you're going through. So a lot of people are strong right here, right? But if you catch their punch earlier in the chain, mm -hmm. it doesn't have any juice. Yeah. And so one of the things that I did in boxing, because I boxed before as well, is I would go at different distances to the bag and throw my punches from there, like only in here, only here, only here. Basically taking the idea of Bruce Lee's one and three inch punch and applying it to boxing at any possible range I could interface the opponent. So, you know, maybe in an ideal world, right? You might think I'd have, I'm gonna use his chest instead of his face. Mm -hmm. <laughs> in an ideal world, I might think, okay, I'm gonna have all my body weight connect here, right? But in real life, we might be in the clinch. I want that power right there. Now, in order to do that, I have to train that. I have to train the functional transmission of energy from every single range. So that's not going to completely answer your question. But the thing is, it does take hard, consistent work and time to develop functional flexibility for everything that you're doing, kicking, striking, everything. All right, that's great. Thank you. So we're out of time for today, but thanks for everyone for coming out and, and training with us today. We'll be here again next week on Instagram and tomorrow on YouTube. So if you haven't already gone to YouTube, go to Ninja Nate, subscribe. Also go to Aloha Kai and subscribe. And we guys see you tomorrow. All right? Aloha. See ya. Aloha.